Well, we've got a case that started way back in 2021. Joe Biden, then president, still president, uh, issuing a rule that ultimately said you can't have lower receivers that are only 80 percent completed, calling them ghost guns. And a rule was trying to block uh, gun kits from being sold. But apparently, according to, to some reporting here in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals for the U.S. Courts, they found in favor of plaintiffs in a case challenging the rule. And uh, this stemming, of course, from uh, other cases that have filed uh, to, to challenge the, the rule on lower receivers uh, being labeled gun parts, uh, even if they're only 80 percent completed. Uh, so this is being seen as, well, checkmate. And uh, the case is uh, uh, with Defense Distributed, Blackhawk Manufacturing Group, the Second Amendment Foundation, and Polymer 80. Uh, and the ruling out of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, essentially allows for those companies to continue selling unfinished gun parts or 80% receivers legally. Uh, welcome in. Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. And uh, we talk a lot uh, each morning, uh, most mornings, about uh, what's going on when it comes to living litigation against gun laws and gun regulations as we patiently wait for any kind of outcome from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, where it's been weeks since they heard that case in court, and we're uh, waiting to see what they do with the Illinois gun and magazine ban. Uh, so we'll uh, actually take a look at some of the, the latest in that case coming up here in, uh, in just a few minutes, but I definitely wanted to get to this with the uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling in favor of defense distributed. And the court uh, said that because the ATF has not demonstrated a strong likelihood of success on the merits, nor irreparable harm in the absence of a stay, we deny the government's request to stay, uh, vacature, of the two challenged portions of the rule. Defense Distributed, they released a statement saying that the Fifth Circuit knows the ATF will not succeed on the merits. This rule was never the result of the popular will, but was instead a cynical ploy to launder Bloomberg gun control priorities through the APA rulemaking process as a reward for gun controllers supporting the Biden campaign in 2021. Uh, so you also have Dist Defense Distributed, and this is where it could possibly uh, run into Illinois policies, and that is uh, the uh, the defense distributed going after uh, laws in other in other states. Uh, they've uh, put out a barrage of lawsuits against, uh, you know, AGs from various states who decide to send a cease and desist letter over the legal victory. Uh, and again, it's something that uh, is being considered uh, checkmate when it comes to this particular issue. And this follows, uh, as we've uh, reported on previously, other court cases that had challenged the ATF's rule. And uh, the, the premise is you can't just craft a rule and then limit uh, people's ability to access firearms, as is their Second Amendment right. Uh, Well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Uh, but you had uh, several other lawsuits that uh, led to uh, the courts essentially nullifying the ATF's rule. Uh, you had cases like Gun Owners of America versus Garland, Mock versus Garland, Car Gill versus Garland. Uh, these are just some of the cases that stopped enforcement of Biden's frame or receiver rule. And this was a rule that they said, essentially a hunk of metal, if it looks like a lower receiver, even though it's not finished and can't be a lower receiver, uh, the rule essentially said that they can go ahead and um, uh, limit those. Uh, but the courts are chiming in saying, no, you can't just craft these rules and make this happen. So interesting uh, case there. Again, uh, Biden's rule that the ATF had about lower receivers being blocked by yet another court and defense distributed uh, is uh, very much at the center of this and interesting to see uh, where it's being reported that defense distributed is uh, essentially preparing to unleash a barrage of lawsuits at uh, state attorneys general who decide to send cease and desist letters over their legal victory in this case. Uh, so will it deter others? Well, we have a law here in Illinois that uh, the General Assembly passed and uh, the governor signed that ultimately uh, you know, prohibits uh, these certain types of items. So we'll see how this impacts Illinois' law uh, in particular. Stay tuned. Coming back, we'll talk more about Illinois' law and uh, what it means when we uh, review the latest steps in the litigation against Illinois' gun and magazine ban. An amicus brief 
attempting to be filed, but the person who filed it is now being told they cannot use the electronic filing system in that Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals case. We'll touch on that next year with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and... So where are we at with the litigation against Illinois' gun and magazine ban? I know a lot of people are anxiously anticipating the outcome of the uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, where last month they heard the case, and it's been almost... Uh, a full month now. So let's take a look at the docket for that case here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. You can follow along anywhere. Just search Bishop on air, either via x.com, <laughs> which is uh, what, you know, Twitterly formerly you know, named, um, uh, or you can find me on Facebook or YouTube. Um, we can connect that way. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the docket here where you've got uh, the case being heard on June 29th. It was argued uh, about the challenge against Illinois' gun and magazine ban where uh, they heard the case and all the back and forth. And ultimately, you had uh, the, the judges asking uh, very specific questions about a variety of things, including uh, talking about uh, rocket launchers and uh, things along those lines uh, and whether or not those could be ever regulated. Uh, so interesting to see that. Uh, but if you take a look at the docket again, you've got the, the, ar the case argued. And there were attempts to have uh, multiple uh, amicus briefs filed, uh, including, uh, you know, from uh, international law enforcement educators and trainers. Uh, you had uh, other uh, measures that were looking to be filed, uh, including from uh, the, the California Rifle and Pistol Association and uh, other types of uh, gun owner clubs. Uh, and even uh, some amicus briefs being attempted to be filed by various states. But one in particular I wanted to, to raise uh, to your attention here is a, an amicus brief from John Coutinilli um, for uh, the, the case after oral arguments. And uh, they're looking to uh, essentially file an amicus brief, but the court fired back and said, they denied reconsideration of allowing for Coutinelli's uh, amicus brief, friend of the court brief. Uh, and also, uh, they essentially took away his uh, electronic case filing permission uh, and terminated that. So you've got that order that was ultimately filed as well. But uh, let's take a look at uh, the, 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 the brief for reconsideration that uh, John Coutinelli filed here. And ultimately saying that there were things that were brought up during the oral arguments that uh, Coutinelli wants to provide more information about uh, and uh, asking for them to reevaluate filing the amicus brief. Uh, so we go on here, it says, uh, what's missing in the party's briefs is the historical insights into how the key phrases dangerous and unusual and in common use relate to societal biases that carry forward into this case which is provided in Coutinelli's brief. Uh, these societal biases are based on how and why a particular arm is used in society and ultimately decided determining uh, whether an arm is uh, has constitutional protections. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, the oral arguments raise the question of constitutional protection for several arms, including stinger missiles, bazookas, grenades, and machine guns. If you remember that conversation, it was rather fascinating uh, because uh, the, the plaintiffs shot back and said, this case isn't about bazookas uh, and that's uh, something that uh, was was you know not issued to standard issue for military you had to be specialized others outside of the hearing they argued that uh, you know the the issue of uh, uh, the, the the bazookas and the grenades those are indiscriminate you throw those there's collateral damage uh, when it comes to firing a rifle uh, a semi-automatic rifle that's very fine-tuned and very precise uh, so you've got uh, this uh, ongoing uh, amicus uh, filing that uh, is being attempted here but denied by the court uh, from uh, John Coutinelli. Uh, he goes on to, to discuss that uh, the methodology presented in his amicus brief can be used to determine this constitutional protection. Stinger missiles are not protected because they're used to shoot down aircraft and there is no legitimate use in society for shooting down aircraft. Bazookas, grenades, and machine guns are all designed to attack areas rather than specific points. So again, kind of indiscriminate, right? Bazookas and grenades do this by 
dispersing shrapnel over an area, while machine guns use rapid fire and multiple bullets to attack an area. Uh, Judge Wood used the term spraying bullets, which is another way to say you're attacking an area. And uh, if this is, uh, it is this attack on an area that is not legitimate use. Uh, if a semi-automatic firearm were used to attack an area, that person would likely be charged with a crime because it's not societally acceptable to use firearms in that manner. Uh, assault weapon and large capacity ammunition feeding devices are commonly used for legitimate purposes in society. The court simply needs to read the law in question to find examples of commonly accepted use of assault weapons as documented in the motion for leave. Uh, and it goes on to talk about the historical insights in uh, Coutinelli's brief uh, is uh, derived from historical court cases that explain why concealed weapons are banned. This historical reasoning is based on how these weapons were used in society. It goes on and uh, he lays it out in, in, in a whole bunch of other detail. But uh, ultimately, uh, if you look at the docket, you've got the, uh, the judges denying the amici brief and uh, John Coutinelli's uh, permission to use electronic filing system is terminated. He said briefing is complete and Coutinelli as a non-party does not need to file anything further in this appeal. So uh, that happened earlier this month. I didn't see it. Wanted to definitely get it out there for you as we still continue to wait for any kind of outcome from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals on the case challenging Illinois' gun and magazine ban. Uh, just another little twist and turn there. Uh, and I guess uh, further uh, conversation about, uh, you know, the idea of bazookas uh, targeting an area rather than a specific uh, thing and uh, how that's not societally acceptable and not considered arms. Uh, so uh, interesting to, to hear those uh, arguments, uh, and hopefully it just adds to uh, the context of what we're uh, dealing with here. Uh, but you've got other cases as well that uh, continue to be just kind of uh, hanging out. Uh, in particular, you've got uh, the Langley case where uh, you had um, – the um, uh, attorney, uh, Thomas Mag, uh, he filed to have that uh, reconsidered on vagueness issues. And the court there essentially said that uh, it's they're going ahead and, and uh, keeping the stay uh, on the ruling from the Southern District. Uh, ultimately saying that, uh, yeah, it's already been briefed and uh, the case has been consolidated in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. So um, they're going to just continue to stay the Southern District's ruling uh, in the Langley case, which is uh, one of the several cases consolidated in the Southern District of Illinois. So uh, that's where we're at right now. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth uh, leading up to all of this as we continue to wait for the outcome of the uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in the challenge of Illinois' gun and magazine ban. So uh, hopefully that gets your morning started with uh, the very latest on what's going on uh, when it comes to Second Amendment rights in the court.